fiery horse with a speed of light, the cloud of dust, and a hearty hi Silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness, have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of a great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. We're heading for the big trail. I am Silver. It was a night of wind and rain and rolling thunder. Slender saplings bent like weeping women in the howling blasts, and frightened animals streaked across the prairie seeking refuge from the storm. Then high on a mountain slope with a slashing rain made a slippery, dangerous slide of the deep-rutted wagon trail came a new ominous sound. The staccato of horses' hoofs thundered in the mud of the mountain trail as the Overland stage lurched dangerously around a bend. On the driver's seat, two men sat slumped together, the gnarled hands of one grasping the reins of the team but making no effort to control them. And unchecked, the runaway stage thundered on. Come on, Silver! Come on, big fella! Suddenly, a lightning flash revealed a masked man astride a powerful white stallion, ranging his horse alongside. For a moment, the long, rhythmic strides of the stallion seemed unable to gain on the frightened foreign hand. Come on, boy. A few this. whispered words from its rider spurred the horse to greater efforts, and the lone ranger reached for the rein of the team's lead animal. That's it. Now we've got them, big fella. Pull, pull there. Pull up. Pull up there. Pull. <laughs> Outdistanced by the flying feet of Silver, Tonto and Dan, the 14-year-old boy whom fate had revealed as the Lone Ranger's nephew, reined in their mounts where the masked man had stopped the stage. Oh, we not keep up with Silver. I'm too fast. Golly, I'll say he is. You were riding like the wind. We might never have caught that stage if it weren't for Silver's speed. Hold this rein, Dan. I want to look at the driver and the guard. You bet. I was afraid so, Tonto. What? They're both dead. Oh, them shot. Let me see the guard's rifle. Huh, you pick. Oh, it hasn't been fired. Whoever ambushed the stage took them completely by surprise. Ah, uh, them not have chance. Gosh, why do you suppose even stage robbers would want to deliberately kill a driver and guard? I don't know, Dan. Uh, what we do? Help me place these men inside the coach. Take your shoulders, Kimosabe. Uh, we got them. There. Now the other one. Me got him. That's all we can do for them at the present time. Uh, Bring Silver with you, Tonto. Uh, me savvy. Are you going to drive the stage in the mountain view? Yes, Dan. We may find a clue to the killers. Come on there. Get up there. Get up. Get up. Come on.
Jeff Colgan, express manager of the Overland Stage in Mountain View, was sitting with his daughter Mary in the living room of their home adjoining the express office when they heard the stage drive up. Well, there she comes now, Mary. I reckon I'd better mosey out and hear what Pop and Slim had to report. I'll go, Dad. You're tired. And it's a dreadful night. You might catch cold. You're just like your mother used to be. Always fretting over me. I'll answer it. All right. Oh, I didn't mean to startle you. Masked and... I, I don't know. Are you the manager of the express office? That's right, Harry. Dad, he, he's holding Slim in his arms. Come in, Toto. Uh, he come. The Indians carry him pub. We'll put them over there on that couch, Kimosabe. Uh-uh. Are they... Are they dead? Yes, murdered. Murdered? Why, son, I don't reach for that gun. My friend and I didn't kill them. Oh, well, if you didn't, who did? I don't know. I thought you might give me a clue to the killers. Your mask and got an engine partner. You two look mighty suspicious to me. I mean, Wait, the... Dad. Somehow I... I believe he's telling the truth. What was the stage freighting tonight that would invite a holdup? Not a plain thing. Only cargo with some boxes of calico for the general store and a store-bought suit ordered by old Lem Parsons from Lark City. Are you sure there was nothing valuable aboard? You mean gold or cash? Dead certain, mister. I'm notified of every shipment that comes through, and there won't be another until the... What is it, Dad? Passenger. Joel Eakin was due here on that stage, huh? What do you suppose... Who's he... Joel Eakin? Government agent. Had a letter from a couple of days ago. He said he expected to travel to Mountain View on today's stage. Did he say why he was coming? Of course he did. I can't see how it's any business of yours. The government's lending money to extend the railroad from Mountain View to Five Pines, and the first shipment is to be paid out in wages to the workers. Mr. Eakin was coming to plan with Dad so the payroll would be sure to arrive safely. I see. But Mr. Eakin hasn't told us yet when the cash is coming through. Best it, Mary, that's a confidential matter, and here you go telling the first stranger you meet. And a mask one at that. You have nothing to fear from me. I'll be the judge of that. There's something mighty funny about this whole business. First Pop and Slim is shot, and then Egan disappears. You can't be sure that he disappeared, Dad. He may have decided to take a later stage. Yes, maybe you're right. Who else knows the contents of Egan's letter besides you and Mary? Well, nobody except... No, you don't. Last you kid, you follow my aim. Drop that gun. You little coyote, I'll make you pay for that. Toto, that's Dan. Uh-huh. Come on. Mary Colvin, get down on the floor. Someone's shooting at us. Yeah, but... Hurry. Dan, the masked man shot out the light. Who's ever outside can't see the shoot now. Come on, Toto. We heard him. We heard him right away. Ben! Ben, where are you? Maybe him right after gunman. Either that or... What do you think? Well, the gunman kidnapped Dan. Mm, that's right. We've got to find him, Toto. Uh, but plenty hard to trail him. I know it, Kimosabe. In the dark, it'll be like hunting a needle in a haystack. But we'll have to try. At least we know the direction they've taken. Kimosabe, me see horseman in lightning flash. Here, Silver. Come, scout. Anything happens to that boy? Uh, we ride past. Come on, Silver. Get him up, scout. Get him up. Come on, Silver. Meanwhile, a considerable distance ahead, Dan urged his horse through the relentless rain in pursuit of the gunman he had intercepted outside the home of Jeff Colvin. His eager eyes peered through the inky night at the shadowy figure of a horseman who whipped his mount through a muddy arroyo, unaware that he was being followed. Come on, boy. After him. Faster, boy. Faster. Dawn was breaking over the blue-gray hills, and the rain had long stopped when Dan's quarry rode up to a slope which fronted an abandoned mine and reined in his horse. Suddenly, a shot at him across the wastelands, and a bullet plowed the dirt a few feet away from him. Don't shoot! It's Cork! Now, walk with your hands up and let's have a look at you. I'm walking. I keep that gun in leather. Oh, howdy, Cork. Looks like you're the right ticket after all. Who else would I be, you doggone fool? <laughs> Can't help it, boss's orders. He didn't want any slip-ups at this stage of the game. My job's to slip a slug between the ribs and ask questions afterwards. <laughs> You're lucky I only creased dirt with your slug. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I remember you in my will. Where's the boss? Down near the mine shaft, working over Joe Leakin. I'll go on down. I've got news for him. Patience with you, Weakin. 
Please, let me alone. Don't ask me any more questions. I've told you all I know. You're lying. You ought to know by now it won't do you any good to lie. I have ways of finding out what I want to know. Painful ways. <laughs> Haven't you done enough to me already? Let me go. Let me go. Who is it? It's Cork. Cork, what are you doing here? Well, I told you to stick to your job in the express office and keep me informed about Colbin. I had to see you, King. Something's come up. A lot more dangerous to our plans than Colbin. What do you mean? After you waylaid the stage last night and drilled the driver and the guard, somebody drove it into Mountain View. What of it? That somebody I'm referring to is the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? I see you've heard of him. Yeah. Who hasn't? But I've never seen him. He's never seen me. I took care of that. I tried to drill him while he was talking to Colvin, but some kid knocked my gun out of line. Don't tell me that mask hombre trailed you. Uh, not a chance. He was still inside the house when I rode off. And in that storm last night, he'd wind up in circles. That hombre never winds up in circles. If you've tipped my hand, Cork, just when I'm set to pull the biggest deal that's come my way, I'll... I'll write my signature on you personally. With lead. Ain't you forgetting that it was me who put you in line with this deal in the first place? If I hadn't read the letter Eakin sent to Colbin in the express office, you'd never have heard about the pay cash. I ain't forgetting. That's why I'm cutting you in for a third of the cash. You still figure I'm getting the money the same way? Sure. Why not? I don't know. Just thought that a lone ranger being around here might make a difference. How can it? You don't know me from Adam. Yeah, just the same, I'd feel a lot safer if you hadn't riddled the stage driver and the guard. They died because they had to, you fool. They saw Eakin plenty while he was their passenger. They'd have recognized a substitute pronto and talked. Yeah, I reckon you're right. Yeah, speaking of talking, what about him? Oh, well, Eakin here? <laughs> the boys and me have worked over him plenty. But he still won't tell when the pay cash is coming through. You'd better sweat it out of him, King. He's the only one who knows. Don't worry, he'll talk. I've been saving my best tricks for last. Give me a hand with him. Uh, sure. Eakin! Eakin! Oh. Uh, he's out cold. You'll never get the information out of him in this shape. I'll bring him around. Hand me that bucket of water. Uh, here it is. This will wake him up. <coughs> now, you stubborn <coughs> maverick, will you tell us what we want to know? Or do I have to use more persuasion? What do you... What do you want with me? You know what I want. When is that government pay cash coming through? No, I, I can't tell you. You mean you won't tell? But before I'm through, you'll beg to tell go. me. Take your hands off. Shut up, kid, or I'll put a slug between your eyes. Here's one for you. Oh, oh, you little wildcat. Slam me with your fist, will you? Who's the kid, Mace? I don't know, King. Found him snooping around outside. Thought I'd better bring him in for your look-see. Uh, but keep your weather eye peeled. He's a firebrand. I know that kid. Yeah? Who is he? He's the one I told you about. He must have followed me out here from Colbin's. Spying, eh? Well, that's too bad, kid. What do you mean? You know too much. If you went back, you'd talk. You don't frighten me. No? Take a look at Eakin here and you'll tell me different. But at least he's alive. You mean you... The only way you'll leave this cave, kid, is horizontal. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. watched with horror and anger and struggled helplessly in the ropes which bound his wrists and ankles, King, Cork, and Mace worked over Joel Eakin until flesh and blood could stand no more. Uh, oh, stop! Oh, 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 oh,
stop that. Let him alone. The sheriff will hand you the same. If Eakin doesn't tell when the pay cash is being shipped soon, we may as well forget it. Because he won't be in any shape to talk. The well, last time I'd have sworn we'd sweat it out of him before this. Oh, uh, wait a minute, boss. He's trying to say something. All right, he can talk. I'll, I'll talk. Well, that's better. You know what we want to hear. When is the pay cash coming through? Uh, tonight. Stagecoach. Did you hear that, boys? Tonight by stage. Just got time to make plans. What about Egan and the kid? Uh, leave him here. May you take a couple of boys to stand guard at the entrance of the mine. I'll take most of the gang with me. Oh, what's the sense in keeping these two alive, boss? Why don't we do away with them now? Because there's a chance Egan is crossing us. Maybe the stage ain't shipping the cash tonight at all. But ain't I want the pleasure of watching him squirm before I send him under. And that goes for the kid, too. Kino. Come on. They're both tied up. We've got some plans to talk over. Mr. Egan. Uh, 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 Mr. Egan, can you hear me? Uh, 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 Guess he's pretty weak. I could only get him a drink of water from that bucket. But my hands are tied. Maybe if I push that bucket over to him. I'll try it anyway. There. Mr. Egan. Mr. Egan, water. Take a drink. Mm -hmm. Water. Drink. Oh, yes. Yes, drink. It drinks back. That's better. Much better. You want a drink? No. Put the drinking cup, the tin cup. I can't reach it. Can you manage to get it in your hands? Put the try this way. I've got it. Now, scrape it against that rock. Make the edges sharp. I don't understand. When they're sharp, you'd be able to cut the ropes that tie me. Yes. Yes, of course. As the government agent scraped the tin cup over the rock to sharpen its edges, Dan rolled on his back and stared at a jagged hole which appeared in the cone-shaped roof of the cave directly over the mine shaft. He could feel the damp air from the underground sucked past him up through the hole in the roof. And suddenly an idea formed in his head. An idea which might bring about their escape. Uh, Mr. Regan. Yes, Dan. I know a way we can send for help. Is that tin sharp enough yet? I think so. Uh, let me see your ropes. We can gather that brush wood and light a fire. The suction will carry the smoke up through that hole in the roof of the cave where it'll be seen for miles around. <clears throat> but how will anyone know we want help? We'll signal for it. You'll see. I'll use that water bucket. <clears throat> now, wait till I cut your ropes. <clears throat> Now, now we're free. Not all together. But if the Lone Ranger and Toto are in these parts, I'll bet it won't be long before we will be. In the still muddy going of the morning after the storm, the Lone Ranger and Tonto searched in vain for a clue to the whereabouts of Dan. Although they knew their horses had taken them in the direction they had seen a horseman go in the murky night, they had failed to find any trace of a trail. Then suddenly the Lone Ranger reined the powerful white stallion up sharply and scanned the sky ahead. Hello, look. Uh, what you see? Unless I'm mistaken, a smoke signal. See? Over by the abandoned mine. Ah, that signal all right. Smoke say, help. Otto, you don't suppose... That may be Dan. Come on, Silver. Get him up. Come on, Silver. Come on, Silver. Some time later, after Dan had burned the last of the brushwood and the fire had smoked out, that from the floor of the cave, the boy suddenly saw a rope dangling a few feet above his head. And looking up, saw the familiar figure of the Lone Ranger crawl through the hole in the roof of the cave and slide down the lariat. Mr. Regan, look. I told you he'd come. Huh? It's the Lone Ranger. Are you all right, Dan? Oh, you bet, now that you're here. Tonto and I saw your signal. I used the Indian signal code. I was sure if you saw it, you'd come. Why did you disappear? Oh, well, I'd taken horses to the shed. Out of the rain, as you'd asked me to, when I saw a man skulking outside Coburn's window with a drawn gun. I see. Well, he looked like he meant to kill someone inside. Maybe even you. So I jumped him, then he ran and I trailed him. You see, I thought he must have some connection with a stage holdup. Seems you were right, Dan. Isn't this Joel Egan, the government agent? Yes, I'm mighty happy to meet you. Where's the other exit to this cave, Dan? What do you care, mister? You ain't going anywhere. Mace! Just take them six guns out, barrel first, and let them hit the dirt. I'll take them out. Oh, my hand! Good gracious, the Lone Ranger spun those six guns and shot Mace's guns right out of his hand. Come on, boys, and come 
shoot him. It's the rest of the guards. What do we do? Stand back out of the way, Dan. Come on, Curly, Flint, Henshaw. Let this man come with us. You don't shoot. It's the Redskins. Where'd he come from? Slid down the rope. Same as a Lone Ranger. Come on, Toto. Let me get him. This is for you, Mace. Come on, boys. Give it to him. And another. Outnumbered though they were, the Lone Ranger and Tonto struck out so strongly at their foes that the outlaws quickly gave ground before their smashing blows. For a moment they reeled under the impact of the masked man's and the Indian's fists, and seeing that Mace, their leader, was down, the last fight went out of them, and they submitted meekly to the ropes with which the Lone Ranger, Tonto, and Dan tied them. Then once more astride their horses with Joel Eakin and Tonto's saddle, they headed toward town. Get up there, boy! Get up there! Come on, scout! Come on, Silver! Come on, big fella! Meanwhile, in Mountain View, two horsemen rode up to the hitching rail in front of the express office and reined in their mounts. One was Cork. The other was King, now dressed to resemble an Easterner. Remember, Cork, you just introduced me to Coleman. I'll do all the talking. Hi, Savvy. Come along to the office. Come in. Mr. Colvin, this gentleman is Joel Eakin, the government agent you're expecting. Well, I should say I've been expecting him. I expect you on yesterday's stage, as a matter of fact, Mr. Eakin, like your letter said, I should. Well, I missed it at the last minute. Pressure of business, so I came on by horseback. Horseback? Yes, I. Uh, it was very important that I see you at once. Oh, yes, I see you. Dad, have you... Oh, I... I didn't mean to intrude. Oh, it's all right, Mary. Come on in. This is Mr. Eakin, the government agent we were so anxious about. Indeed we were. We thought you'd been kidnapped by the gang who held up the stage last night and killed the driver and guard. Oh, no, nothing like that. You see, I only came on to town today. That's strange. I, I'm positive I've seen you somewhere before. Uh, you must be mistaken, Miss Mary. Mr. Uh, Eakin has only been in town about an hour. But I'm sure You're mistaken. I... Hey, you two had better run along. Mr. Eakin and I have business to talk over. Uh, you better check over them bills of lading, Cork. Yes, sir. I'll do it right away. I don't care what he says. I know I've seen that man. Now, Colton... Uh, before we begin, Mr. Eakin, you won't mind showing me your credentials, I presume? Oh, I, of course not. Got them right here. Uh, uh, well, everything seems to be here in an order. Fine. Now, Colton, to get down to brass tacks. The government is expressing the pay cash by stage tonight. Tonight? But well, that don't give us much time to round up a posse to make sure the cash is delivered to its destination, the railroad. Well, I've already made the necessary precautions, Colvin. Neither the sheriff nor any of his men will be necessary to guard the shipment. I don't save you. Who used to safeguard the cash if the sheriff ain't? Well, uh, my post is really as an officer of the law, you know. I expect to see the cash through myself. But you need men, gun waddies, to shoe off any fly by nights with an eye for an easy haul. I've got men picked to myself. They're all ready to ride. Hey, those sounds doggone irregular to me, but you're the government's man. You're in charge of the pay cash to was handed over to the railroad, so if that's the way you want it, that's the way I reckon it'll have to be. Fine. And it's agreed there'll be no outside interference when I take to the trail with the cash, huh, yeah, Colvin? It's agreed. Well, I'll be getting along, then. Got some matters to clean up. Hey, good luck, Eagle. And keep your eyes peeled and your guns primed for them renegades that held up the stage last night and murdered old pup Grimes and Slim without giving them a chance. I'll do that, yes. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> the old fool. He just handed over a fortune in cash to them renegades he's so riled up about. <laughs> I saw you coming. I'm so glad you found Dan. Mary, this is Joel Eakin, the government agent your father's expecting. I... There must be some mistake. Oh, what do you mean? Why, Dad just met Mr. Eakin about an hour ago. But it wasn't this man. Oh. He was introduced to Dad by Cork, Dad's assistant in the office. I see. That man was an imposter. I'm Joel Eakin. I can prove it. Well, here comes Mr. Corbin now. Uh. Well, I am glad to see you back. Dad, something awful's happened. What do you mean? Well, the man we thought was Joel Eakin isn't. This is the real Mr. Eakin. I don't understand. He showed me credentials. My credentials. He's the leader of a gang of outlaws. They kidnapped me from the stage last night in order to impersonate me and steal the payroll money. And he's a low-down polecat who shot Pop and Slim from ambush. That's right. Now the outlaws have taken complete charge of the pay cash. There ain't a single sheriff's man assigned to guard in the stage. What's that? Gosh, what'll we do? Perhaps our friend Cork may have some helpful suggestions. Look, it's Cork. He's riding away. Say, he's the man I saw who shot through your window last night. 
He's the one I trailed to the gang's hideout. Well, somebody stop him. He'll get away. Oh, uh, him not right, Pie. You look. Come on, Silver. Come on, big fella. Right up, Clark. I'm going now. Kill you. You're trying to take me. Faster, Silver. Stay back. You're shooting wild, Clark. You haven't a chance. I'll show you. Closer, Silver. Turn back. Turn back, I tell you. I'm going to rope you, Clark. No, you drag me out of my saddle. Your last chance. Rain up. I'll kill you first. You asked for it. Oh. Let me go. Stop it. I give in. Who's in back for? Whoa. Where is King Fang to steal the cash from the stage tonight, Clark? I don't know. I... Answer me, Earl. Oh. Don't pull that rope again, I'll tell. It's five pines. He plans to weigh lead at five pines. <laughs> That night, as King and his hard-faced gun expert renegades halted the stage at Five Pines to raid it at the government pay cash, they were suddenly surprised by a fusillade of shots. Surrender, all of you. Throw down them guns, King. You surrounded. It's an ambush, boys. Shoot it out. You haven't a chance, King. Don't listen to them, boys. Shoot them down. All right, then. Let them let him have it. I'm coming for you, King. I'm ready for you, mister. You don't need that gun. No. Tell your men to throw down their guns. Throw in, boys. They've got us. Uh, we've got you in enough ways to hang you, King. Hang you for murder. I can pop Grimes and Slim Hancock would be glad to know you're right for a hang noose. You can't prove it. I can prove it, King. I was a passenger on the stage when you shot them down. He can. I had to pull a hole over our eyes for that masquerade, eh, King? But you got caught in your own trap. Thanks to the Lone Ranger. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. 